What's up, guys? Welcome to Chai Guys Podcast. I'm Ethan. And I'm Darian. And this is the Chai Guys Podcast, where we spill the tea on Iranian-American Gen Z culture. Yes. So every week, we, we're going to have one guest um, who is Iranian or Middle Eastern um, to talk about, you know, some taboo subjects that you're not necessarily comfortable speaking to your parents about. And we really want to um, start the trail of podcasts and media for Gen Z Iranians um, because there is, you know, not that much representation out there. Very little, very little. So, um, yeah, we just wanted to start this off. We wanted to kind of set set a trail for those who maybe want to do something like this in the future. It's just something different because, I mean, it's different because, you know, you know, it's different when you tell your parents that you're starting a podcast and they say, what is a podcast? What is this? What are you talking about? I don't understand. <laughs> the va. Yes. Yeah, you got to have the <laughs> emphasis on that. Yes. So Ethan is a TikToker. Do you want to talk about your TikTok journey? So on uh, TikTok, I am your favorite Azizam for those of you who don't know and can't tell by my um, Farsi accent. Uh, I started TikTok as a joke, honestly, a couple months ago, maybe like mid mid year last year, because I've been making TikToks like stupid stuff, nothing Persian or anything. And then I made one TikTok um, about being Persian and mm -hmm. it blew up. I'm like viral. Interesting. So this is what's going to be making me money. So I kept going with that. I kept making Persian TikTok content, Iranian content, relatable content. I got reposted on a couple of popular Instagram pages and people just kept wanting more. So I'd make videos with my parents. Those ones did pretty good too. Those are pretty funny. But yeah, I went from like, within the span of these couple months, I went from like a couple hundred to like, I think I'm at like 8,500 right now. And like over wow. 200K likes, over a million Insane, views. Insane, that growth. So I, it's just, it's still a shock to me, but I'm kind of just rolling with it because people seem to like it. And I've always wanted to start a podcast. So when Darian reached out to me, not even two, like two months ago, I didn't know who he is. but And then, yeah, and here we are now. Cold DMs. <laughs> Cold DMs. Yeah, I got an email from him one morning. I was going to my, I was going to work. I was like, interesting. I wanted to start a podcast. How does he know this? I didn't even know. And then I saw his picture and it was a ginger kid. I was like, is this kid? Red hair. I, he's not Persian. I was so confused. I thought it was like a scam or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's you don't see very many Persian gingers. Not at all. It, it's the very first. rare. Maybe the last. <laughs> Maybe the last. Because none of us, neither of us look Persian. Exactly. Every. No. Everyone that we meet, everyone that and we, I meet. And we're both fluent in Farsi. We're both fluent in Far Farsi. That yeah. is right. Yeah. So we're the last people to expect. So when we tell people we're Persian, we start speaking Farsi. It's always the best reaction it's so from funny. them. It's hilarious. So I you're, and you like grow up, grew up in LA too. Right? I grew up in LA. Yeah. yeah. I know you were, you were not born in LA. I was not born in LA. No. I'm a rare <laughs> Iranian. Yeah. No, I was born in the Bronx, New York. So on top of being the only, you know, m Middle Eastern person, I was the only Persian so it was definitely hard finding that community sense of community so I kind of knew I wanted to come to LA you know and have that also sense of community because no one really looked like me there no one really looks like me here no, either I don't, I don't, but I don't you know you. having that sense of culture and community I think was really important but I honestly am very grateful that I grew up in that you know setting too because I think I wouldn't be here where I am today if I didn't grow up there. Too. Which neighborhood in the Bronx did you grow up? In Riverdale. Riverdale. Yeah, so it's like 10 minutes from Manhattan if you don't know it. Uh, yeah, I, I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea where Riverdale is. Yeah. I just know the show Riverdale. <laughs> yeah, um, so. yeah I, I'm very unfamiliar with New York. I've been there one time, but I, was, I went to Manhattan. So uh, Times Square, typical New York tourist destination. But um, yeah, I mean, from New York to LA, that's, that's a big jump. It is. It is. And it's definitely... You know, a lot of people ask me, like, do you prefer New York or L.A.? And it's I don't have an answer. I'm like both. Honestly, it depends on how old you are. You know, in your 20s, I think New York is great. But, you know, if you want a family, L.A. is great. So I'm like both. If I could have they a both city. Have their pros and yeah, cons. they both have their pros and cons. And, you know, I am really I think, you know, we we're talking we're hopefully going to talk about it in the future episodes, too, about, you know, how demanding L.A. can be in every industry honestly, oh, man. you know because it's, it's ridiculous so competitive and um you know it, it can it can get in your head for sure yeah i mean i do tiktok as like a side thing like not even a serious thing but even that is it's still competitive like i mean i'm from the la area but yeah there's so many like persian tiktokers and it's like it's it's difficult not to like i wouldn't say copy their content but you kind of want to be original like all my videos i try to be as original as authentic sure. i can be because yeah. that's 
that's just I don't want to put out fake content. Like I see people putting out fake content all yeah. the time. And you can tell when they're doing fake content for views. Yeah. So it's like at this point I don't really care for views as much. I just want to I just want people to laugh and just I just want to make their day, make them smile. No, exactly. And I think, you know, growing up in Persian households it can be very serious. You know, it could be oh like school first, academics is priority over everything, you know, no phones at the table, no, you know, <laughs> going out at night. So you're just ingrained in this serious culture. And I like how, you know, your TikTok is promoting that humor and that sense of just making trying you know, to people it laugh. Bit, yeah. And it's like relatable content. It's not, you know, for our parents because yeah. they, they wouldn't get that. See, know? but the funny thing is I've gotten a lot of like I've met a lot of people on TikTok, not even TikTokers, just like friends from all over the country. Yeah. I, I've met people from Chicago, Toronto, um, New York, Florida, everywhere, all over the place. And they tell me like I, I they've DM me and I've. They're telling me how their parents always send them so funny. my videos. And I'm like, your parents are watching my videos? They're like, yeah. My mom always sends me when you post a new video. I'm like, I guess I'm getting the entire demographic. But, um, yeah, TikTok is not typically um, Iranian approved yeah. just because it's like it's can be viewed as, as a tra- distraction. I can't tell you how many times my parents have been like, in TikTok, TikTok, Chikar, me kona boro, sara, I know. But, um, yeah, I just keep doing it. And they, they seem to like the videos, too. Like yeah. my dad started, my dad opened a TikTok account like a, like yeah, last. He followed you recently. He I heard. followed yeah. me. Yeah, I open my phone in the morning and I see a, a TikTok account follow me and I see that picture looks very familiar, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's my dad. And my uncle follows me too. A bunch of my family. My dad made a birthday post for me and he said, everyone go follow my son on TikTok. I'm like, you're trying to ruin me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> canceled. This, I'm I'm gonna get canceled by my own family. Yeah. No, exactly, for sure. No, and I think like. If for the Persians that are not in LA listening, the Persian circle in LA is very small in the sense that everyone knows each other through someone. Yeah, you it's know? like we're all family. It's yeah, just everyone really somehow knows someone through a mutual friend, through a cousin, through whatever it is. And it's interesting because, you know, you were at like a UCLA party, you were telling me. And I what was, happened. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like you said, like we all know each other. We're probably yeah. all related somehow. But um, like you were walking in, then like, I everyone, walked yeah. in. There was this Persian party that I went to couple weeks ago i went with my friend and he told me before because i went to a previous persian party like a couple months back and i got recognized by one person there i was like okay yeah this is cool so then i walked in he's like do you think people are going to recognize you i'm like only the people who invited me so as soon as i walk in not even like five steps i i get bombarded by this group of people saying oh my gosh your favorite azizam is here everybody get in line everybody focus up your favorite Aziz. we have a celebrity the entire night I was being called a celebrity and I had to humble myself. I'm like, I'm not a celebrity. But you are. (laughs) That's what people keep saying, but I'm not even big enough to be a celebrity. Like there are people with way more followers than me. It's just not even like, I guess fair to call me a celebrity because I'm just doing my thing. I'm just trying to make people laugh, but it was just so funny how many people that night recognized me and came up to me and talked to me about, I even took pictures with people that night. For sure. It was, it was fun. It was a fun night for sure. I enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that party was, I mean, I was a little bit disappointed just because the DJ did not exceed my expectations. Played a lot of modern music. I'm more old school. Ebi, Comrade Human, Monsignor Gane. See, I'm an Arash guy. Arash too, I'm you know. I'm a diehard Arash. I like, yeah. I made a TikTok recently with Arash. It's one of those old songs, Temptation, and it, that one blew Fire up too. Song. Amazing Listen song. Listen to Temptation on Spotify. Temptation, yeah. yeah and then, After this podcast. Yeah, and then DM Arash <laughs> saying we plugged him for free, so he better hook us up with a, an interview. But yeah, the TikTok comments get a little out of hand sometimes too. I get... Like I said, I get a lot of ages, um, but I mean, I tell my friends, it's like, you don't have to have a young audience, but when I have moms in my comment section, it's like, these MILFs are always in my comment section. It's, my friends call them cougars too. It's like, the cougars want Azizam, but the, the Azizam, Azizam. Azizam does not want the cougars. <laughs> so I try to, it's not mutual. I, I ignore a lot of the comments, but I, I try to just do my best and make everyone happy. Yeah. No, and it's cool because you're like, Basically the face of Iranian TikTok. Right I now. wouldn't say the face of Iranian TikTok. I think that's a stretch. I think you're just humble. I'm, 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 I'm going to get face. humbled after this episode. But I'm there are people who make a lot more content than me, have a lot more followers. But um, you're you're coming up there too. I'm, you're gonna you're gonna take my place one day <laughs> with the amount of videos you've been Maybe. posting. We have to collab. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make collabs. No, but I think it's I think it's really cool how you know we started this podcast basically because we found that there isn't anything out there like it you know we found that niche of iranian american gen z and there's a community out there there's so many 
Iranian, you know, teenagers that parents are Iranian. Oh, you know, grew up here. A, a mount. They're not so Persian. They're not so American. But kind of like whitewash. You know, they're they're in that middle area, and yeah. we're targeting that middle area from you know early teenagers to millennials. We're mm-hmm. f- focusing, you know, on that category, and I think it's you know going to be cool because we're throwing in that culture element of it you know yeah because a lot of the persians that i meet out here like i said they're they're kind of whitewashed they're not really yeah. into it with their culture like they don't really listen to the music that much they don't really a lot of them don't speak farsi either so when i'm speaking farsi no. to them they just they're like what are you yeah. saying so and it's, it's like, not their fault you know it's the parents no, yeah you know, for sure but that don't want to teach them you i know? know it just feels like they're they've out of tune with the culture so hopefully this yeah. podcast gets them in tune and yeah back in to check. the roots in check yeah they need a reality check. So you didn't. I saw. I looked your name up on YouTube, and I saw you did a TED talk. I you're did. Thirteen. I did. I did give a TED talk when I was. 13. So if anything, you're more of a celebrity so, than I no, am. No, not at all. You're more of a celebrity <laughs> than I am. No, I mean, you know, growing up, my mom was. Uh, my both of my parents are really supportive, and they always wanted you know the best for me. Always. As a kid, and I think you know I have a lot to thank them for that. But you know, on the flip side, it was definitely a very competitive atmosphere and i think that's what like new york is too you know new york to live there you need to work hard and mm-hmm. it's like just because like the small thing like rent there is insanely high you know so same with la same with san francisco and that's why i think the per- persians why their work ethic is so strong it's because they live in these you know amazing cities you know yeah. so i think um growing up my mom was always like you know second is first to lose be the best top of the class top of everything you know be first place um and she like Rick, that's some ricky bobby stuff right i know there. i know so um you know i reached out to local ted events um conferences and they would respond automatically with the line saying you have to be 18 or older um but i didn't let that stop me so i just kept emailing kept emailing i think i sent like over 200 emails really? because there's so many ted events in new york yeah so um Shout out to Lisa, who finally <laughs> took a chance on me. And then... What was it about? It was about actually teaching math differently, which is the funny part. Mm. Out of all things I could be talking about, I talked about math. Um, but, you know, it was... The reaction from my classmates was the funniest because I skipped school for it and I never skipped school. So they thought, oh, maybe this is his, like, rebel phase. <laughs> I'm like, what, no, I'm actually what, talking about math in Albany. What 13-year-old so, is into math? Yeah. Usually, when I, I remember when I was 13, yeah. I was sitting down watching Spongebob and no, playing video exactly. games. And, you know, it's kind of hard. It's actually funny because a lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but I still haven't watched it entirely. So, <laughs> I oh, so you're a fraud. Yeah, I actually have not watched the video entirely because I can't, like, put myself to watch it. Why? Which is really crazy. Are you embarrassed? Um, I wouldn't say embarrassed. It was just such a pressure the environment yeah i watched um, i watched the video darian yeah <laughs> i thought you peed your pants i know you were very nervous i was very nervous i was stuttering and it was because you know my cohort was a bunch of middle-aged men and women and i felt like a senior citizen home so it was just like i was so young you know everyone thought i was another speaker's kid but in reality i was like, like why oh, is this kid on the stage yeah why get, is this get kid security on the get the hell out you know so um that definitely you know as soon as i did it the next day i remember my mom told me you know, wake up school. Great. You did it, but let's go back to the ground. Like, I want more. Yeah. I want want more. more. So, you know, it was definitely hard in high school, you know, growing up and, um, but you know, having supportive friends for sure, uh, was definitely helpful. And, you know, my childhood best friends were also at USC, which helps. Um, and you know, so I think, you know, having that supportive family balanced with the competitive atmosphere, um, is, was definitely, it was hard, you know, it was it was hard, but I think it made me as strong as I am now to take on all that pressured environment from being 3,000 miles away from your parents, you know, when you're 17. So it's like, it's it's definitely hard, but you have to just push through. I'm going to make sure everyone watching this podcast watches your TED Talk. Watch it. We'll plug it in the I'm going to put it video. in my TikTok bio, my Instagram bio. Everywhere. Everyone will watch this. Everyone will watch, everyone will watch it except me. And then it's going to become a meme all over yeah. the place. No, but, you know, I always, you know, grew up with the mentality if, you know, if I want something, I'll get it, you know, yeah. like that mentality. And um, growing up, you know, even for college, I knew I ha- had to 
<laughs> leave New York, and I had to have that distance. And that you didn't like it, or there's no no school is good enough to impress your parents. No, I mean all the good all the good schools are there too. But it's you know, and uh, and in California and, and East Coast, there's amazing schools. But it was the I needed that um, distance in the sense that I'm still you know call them every you day. Need to grow basically. Yeah, I need I call them every day. I'm still I'm like. Honestly, my roommates make fun of me because I'm on the phone with them in Farsi, speaking to them on speaker every single yeah, day. Yeah, but that's when you can make fun of them; they don't even understand you. Exactly, more. exactly. No, yeah. So, uh, sorry if you're listening to this, George <laughs> no, and I, Dylan. I, I know what you mean. I mean, <laughs> but uh, love you guys, and you know, it's you know, I think L.A. for both of us. I think it's a great you know city with amazing opportunities. It's definitely competitive. There's so many people fighting for that one spot, that job position, that internship, whatever it is, but you always have to take that rejection, move on to the next, you know, because yeah. a lot of the rejections push people out of LA too, you know, um, whether it's content creating, whether it's jobs, you know, any yeah. industry. It's it's tough for me too, because I'm, I'm the typical uh, Iranian stereotype. I'm going to medicine. So the amount of people who are competing with me to get into for these sure. internships, so these many. volunteering yeah. jobs, like I, I work at a hospital now, but it's even even that, it was so difficult to finally get a job there. But um, it's a lot of pressure, too, because like when I was younger, I was I'm not going to lie. I was very lazy. My parents knew that, too. So even when I went into high school, I kind of took it as a joke because I really underestimated how difficult it would be to get into college. It's like, oh, I'm Persian. I'll figure it out. I'll get in one way or another. But it was it was really humbling when I didn't get into the schools that I wanted to go to. For sure. So then when I went to community college and I'm there now, so I have one more year, um, there was a lot of like contemplation and i was like i could go to this university but it's like i want more like you're saying i want more like yeah. i want to i'd rather go to ucla than like a cal state i'm not saying cal states are bad they're all really good schools they all teach the same thing but it's like you have this kind of breathing behind your shoulders like ucla what are ucla what are you feeling it's like yeah. you gotta that... I, it's not like i'm doing it for my parents this yeah. is like i tell them all the time i'm doing this for me like it's just a goal that i have in mind that i want to go to a really good school especially for medicine you need to have some sort of like backup to be like even considered for a really good school but again that's all what gpa and grades but i just remember in high school my parents would be breathing behind my for back sure. about my grades yeah but, and honestly i'm glad that they did because now they don't do it and i'm doing a lot better in school than what i did yeah. back then because i was just so lazy i'm taking it seriously now so yeah a lot of the things that they did to me as a kid i'm not saying they were bad they were great parents and they still are i love you mom i love you dad but it really like molded me to who I am For today. Sure. That's why I'm trying to like diversify yeah, exactly. and do more things than just medicine in school. No, exactly. And I think, you know, a lot of people talk about the pressures that it comes from the parents, but even as, you know, kids, you know, like we've realized how many sacrifices, how many sacrifices our parents have made a to lot. even come to America. You Can't know? count and them on fingers. All the opportunities that are here is insane and you can't take it for granted too. So that's why like, Honestly, every Persian I've met is hardworking. Like, I haven't met a lazy Persian, plus or minus a couple cousins. No, you're not allowed to be but... Persian without being hardworking. It's, <laughs> no, it's in exactly. the rule book. No, exactly. And, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's it's definitely, you know, like, we have tiger parents, but we're also tiger sons in the it's, sense it's that— It's how they make us. That's yeah, just, it's how they make uh, us. And if you're not if you're not hardworking and you're, and you're Persian, then yeah. and you're just not Persian. That's just not how we roll. Sure. So how were you, like, in high school? I'm curious. Like, what was your— uh, reputation high school man I, I went to a high school my freshman year and after that first year it was just like it was just I felt like it was a waste because I didn't do it I tried basketball love basketball favorite sport did it all as I was growing up as a kid I didn't make the freshman team but I still wanted to be part of it so I did their team manager and that was fun for a while but you know I mean if you're a team manager you're gonna get bashed in a little bit you got made fun of so I was like mm, okay sure whatever am I really gonna want to do this next year like how is it gonna benefit my future so I went to a different high school where I did more medicine. So, like, I was a student athletic trainer for, like, the, the sports teams there. So, like, anytime an athlete would go down injured, that's when me and, like, the other kids and with the head athletic trainer would go out there and just kind of help this athlete who's injured. So, I mean, that kind of, like, really set in stone that I want to do medicine, especially work with athletes because it's just – I love sports. I love medicine. Why not make the best of both worlds and work with athletes? So, hopefully one day – uh, if you're a future athlete or if you're an athlete right now, hopefully I'll be operating. Call on Dr. Your, Panucci. Call Dr. Future Dr. <laughs> Panucci. I'll be working on your torn ACL one day and I'll make a TikTok out of it. <laughs> your favorite Azizam. Your doctor, favorite, doctor, doctor, your favorite Azizam. Azizam. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's cool. No, I think, you know, like so many people are different than what they're in high school in LA. And I, like, speaking from personal experience, I feel like 
coming to LA shaped me that I'm like very, I was very different in high school than I am now. That was different environments. Yeah. So. In different environments. And, you know, um, like it's just like high school. I think I did a lot of stuff to get into a good college rather than actually like pure passion, you know, but now in college, I'm actually doing things that I actually enjoy yeah. rather than like to get into something else, you know? So I think like that was definitely a big help in terms of like now figuring out what, well, what do I actually like? Not what, what my mom wants me to like. Yeah. You know, you got, cause it, I've learned that over the past couple of years. It's not about like, what's going to really like get you into medical school or make you a lot more popular. You just, yeah. you got to do things that you like. Like my mom tells me every day, it's like, it's like that it translates to the stick will go into your own eye. Basically like you'll regret it. You yeah. got to do something that you love. You got to be passionate about what you're doing. You got to want to wake up in the morning, be excited to go to work. Sometimes it's not all about the money. It's all about how hard you want to work and how much you enjoy the job. So it's not all about money. Just remember that happiness is more important than money. Exactly. Or money is more important than that. Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you're Persian, <laughs> money is obviously very important. Yeah. If you ha happy says, happiness is not going to buy Gucci and Louis or BMWs yeah. and Mercedes. But yeah. it's there's a good balance in it's, between it's the two. It's a balance, you know. Yeah, for sure. That was a great first episode. I think a lot awesome. of people are going to enjoy yes. what we have so, to come. Please follow us on Instagram at Chai Guys Podcast, on TikTok at Chai Guys Podcast, on Spotify, Chai Guys Podcast, and... Um, on YouTube. So please subscribe and let us know what you want to hear more of and who you want to be on our next episode. It's a great outro. Mm -hmm.